All right, let me begin. So first thing first, um, I'm, we are gonna record this uh, whole webinar. So yeah, just letting you guys know. And the second thing is uh, we are using the Zoom webinar feature. So at any time, if you guys have any question, just feel free to just uh, use the Q&A uh, function to just raise any questions. The chat is also enabled. So uh, you guys can just use the chat uh, for whatever reason. Um, the other core team members will be around here to answer any questions that you guys might have. So feel free to just uh, ask any questions as you go along. Yep. Um, thanks so much for coming on a Friday night. I, I think uh, it's really nice that you know we have all 92 of you, now 93, uh, to join me together to talk about what NUS Hacker does. Uh, I am Chris. Uh, I am a core team member of NUS Hackers, and today I'll be introducing to you guys what who, who we are, what NUS Hacker does, and uh, how it, we can benefit you as a participant. So moving on, when, you, when we talk about NUS Hackers, of course, the first question that you guys must think about is, what is hacking, right? So hacking is sort of a term that is very closely related to like hacker culture. So, okay, but of course, when you first uh, listen to the word hacking, you will sort of think about like some guy wearing a hood, you know, typing furiously into some system, trying to break into it. And of course, you will think about uh, this type of like uh, news articles that says, oh, uh, data has been breached and the people are trying to like break the systems to, to do like bad stuff, right? But what if I told you that uh, we actually don't do that at all and that's not our definition of hacking at all. We consider that cracking and we don't do cracking at all. In fact, our type of hacking, our definition of hacking is actually more towards building things and building fun things together, all right? So if you were to visit the NUS hacker site, uh, what the site will tell you is um, we strive to solve problems in elegant and ingenious ways, right? So uh, if you go to the website, you sort of realize that, you know, we sort of write a lot about hacker culture and there's a lot to unpack. So my job here today is to help you to unpack what we mean by hacker culture. So, um, part, so in my interpretation of hacker culture, perhaps uh, one of the things that uh, involves things is like uh, uh, how to make things work in ways that they were never meant to, okay? So for example, uh, one very classic example that when we talk about hacker culture is uh, MIT. So MIT is the Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology. And uh, the students there, they are, they sort of like coined the term, like the term hacker culture sort of originated from there because the students there are too smart and too bored. So what they do is uh, they do very silly things for fun, okay? Such as uh, they have a MIT great dome, this building here, this dome shaped building they have in a campus. So what they do things like um, overnight, they just uh, were able to put a, a campus police cruiser on the roof of the great dome, all right? So this is amazing because like uh, they sort of did it undetected in the sense that uh, you know, like just uh, one day you don't see like a police cruiser on the roof and then the next day you come to campus, suddenly you see a police cruiser on the roof and it's like, there's like flashing lights and stuff and people are just stunned. They're like, why is there a police cruiser on, on, the, on the roof, okay? So um, this is a very elegant hack because uh, they did it undetected, number one. And it, number two is because uh, it's very sophisticated to carry out. Because if you think about it, how do you even move something that's the size of a car onto the roof of a dome. It's like, just interesting. It's like, how do you even like put it there? So what they actually did was, uh, they actually um, dismantled the car and then they sort of like reassembled the car on top of the roof. And in fact, they didn't even use like a police cruiser car because that would be illegal, right? They sort of just um, use a Chevrolet car and they just painted over it to make it look like it's a police cruiser. So yeah, this is a, uh, very amazing hack that some of them do this, like the classic example when we talk about MIT and the hacking culture. And uh, in recent years, uh, updated, more updated version of this is from 2019 would be how the students overnight, they put up, they drip this whole cloth of like a Captain America shoe over the Great Dome, okay? And that's pretty cool too, okay? And um, other than that, they also do things like, uh, this is the MIT Green Building, and they sort of just, uh, hacked it such that they can play Tetris on the building. So if you would like to find out more about the hacking culture, you can just visit this link, hacks.mit.edu. But this is the example of what we mean by, you know, doing things just because people can do it and because it's fun for them to do so. 
And uh, you like to think, oh, NUS, we don't really have things that's like Tetris and like, we are not asking you guys to like go and like put a car on the roof or something, right? But we don't have something that's quite similar. Let me just show you right now. So if you go to NUS mods, I'm sure all, all of us use this, right? You can actually type in this very secret sequence of like keystrokes. And suddenly you have a whole Tetris game that you can actually go in and start playing, right? So things like that. So yeah, I'm not gonna play the game now for you guys, but okay, this is an example of like a hack. So like uh, actually one of the maintainers of NUS mods, he actually like participated in our hackathon, hack and roll. And um, when he was at our hackathon, he just decided, hey, I wanted to do something because it's fun and bored. And I, just, I, I want to put like, Tetris on NUS mods, so he made mod trees, which uh, actually won one of the awards for that year, which is called the uh, um, most awesomely useless hack award. Yeah, so that's just one cool story of NUS mods that you guys probably didn't know. So other than that, um, I think hacker cultures also entails things like building things just because it's fun, because we want to, and because we can. Okay, and uh, one example that I can give is also like. The, you guys, some of you will probably recognize this guy. This guy is a uh, Linus Torvalds. So he's the creator of the Linux kernel, right? And um, uh, at, at first, when he first started out, okay, this was uh, one of his posts from a mailing list. And he just um, put up a post that said, oh, I'm doing a free operating system. It's just a side project. It's just a hobby. And it won't be big and professional like GNU. But look at 30 years from when he made this post. This post was in 1991, back when I wasn't even born yet, and you guys were born as well. And like 30 years later, it is now everywhere. It's probably in your pocket right now if you use an Android phone, because the Android phone runs the Linux kernel. And uh, all the most of the web servers in the world are, is running the Linux server as well, the Linux kernel as well. So it's pretty amazing. You see, he just started it out as like a hobby. He just wanted to have fun and build something that he thought would be useful. And he ended up being so big that Everyone's using it these days. And uh, you, now we, we are back with this NUS mods again. So I always like to give NUS mods as a very good example of like a hack because uh, I'm sure you guys know NUS mods is sort of like the official timetable planner for all of us right now. But it didn't start out that way. Okay. So what we see here is uh, this is a YouTube video of Friday Hacks. Friday Hacks is, uh, is actually the event that we are in right now. Okay. This event is that I'm posting right now is called Friday Hex. So Friday Hex is essentially like this meetup where you know people can come and share cool stuff. So for one of the Friday Hex session, we actually were able to invite the maintainers of NUS mods, okay? And they actually shared about the origins of NUS mods and like uh, how it came along. So if you look at this uh, YouTube video of like their recording, uh, what it actually says is that back in 2011, Okay, some student actually decided that the official timetable was too troublesome to use and he decided to just, you know, solve the problem on his own. He just decided to come up with a hack and like make his own better timetable builder. And year after year, he just improved on, on it and stuff. And uh, he some, somehow just ended up uh, getting so good that it became recognized as an official timetable builder. So this is a very good example of a hack where people just decided to solve a problem that they face solve a pain point that they face and it ended up being an amazing project that people use these days. Yep. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, NUS Sports is actually being run by students. It's completely run by students and it was created by students. And that's why it's so amazing because it's built by students for students. But I mean, yeah, just so that we are clear, uh, NUS Hackers and NUS Sports, we are two different separate organizations. So we are not really the same organization. We are not like affiliated at all. In a sense, yep. Um, Vera, you have a question about what's the secret sequence of keystrokes of on NUS mods. Uh, I I think you can sort of try to find it out on your own, and if you cannot find it, you can come to our NUS hackers chat later, and we can like just ask around and we can share the answer. Yep. So this next project that we're going to talk about is uh, Fluminous. So, um. I'm sure all of us use Luminous and like uh, actually one of the core team members, uh, Julius, of core team members of NUS Hackers, Julius, he decided that he didn't really like Luminous because he found that Luminous was slow and there were certain parts that were difficult for him to use. So one day he just decided to solve the problem on his own and he just decided to reverse engineer the API used by the 
the Luminous, and uh, he came out with a command line tool on his own. And right now, this tool is being used by a lot of people because uh, this tool allows for things like uh, you can sort of just download the entire modules file to your um, to your to your computer, and you can just it sort of like syncs the Luminous modules file to your file system. In a, in a sense, it makes it very easy for you to like just fetch files, fetch announcements and stuff. And this is a very useful hack that it came up with and people are now using it. And uh, in case you guys are curious why it's, why it's called uh, Fluminous, okay, essentially it's uh, F Fluminous. You can sort of figure out what the F means. So I'm not going to like review what it means. Yep. So yeah, now that I gave a very brief run through about what hacker culture is, I'm sure it's a lot more nuanced than that. You guys can read up on your own or read up on our website. I'm going to continue uh, talking about NUS hackers. Like we are going to come back to NUS, hack NUS hackers and talk about what we do, all right? So at NUS hackers, essentially our goal is to build a community of hackers within and beyond NUS. So beyond NUS in the sense that we our events are really catered for everyone. It's not just for NUS students. Anyone in the public, suppose you are like, you know, even like a secondary school student who's interested in like hacking, you can sort of just join us. If you are like a, a, a 60 year old person who's like interested in hacking, you can join us as well. Anyone can join us as long as they're interested in what we do. Okay. And we hope to just provide a platform that builds a community for these hackers to just gather together, share ideas and talk about cool stuff. And we do what we do because uh, it's out of passion, because we want to do it, we love doing it. And passion is what will drive our view forward. And that's why we do everything that we do for all of you guys. Now that we talk about the objective, uh, like our objectives, perhaps the next question will be exactly what are the events we host, right? So for this semester, we are going to host four events, Friday Hacks, Hacker Tools, Hacker School, Project Intern. Okay, so that's what you see on the left column. And in the, on the right column, you see a few other events that we run. Uh, these few other events that we run, uh, they are mostly on rotation. So like uh, semester to semester, we just sort of decide uh, what events we feel like running for the semester and what's more suitable. And then we just sort of uh, pick them up and run them. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the four events on the left and hack and roll. So we'll start with Friday Hacks. So Friday Hacks is essentially just, uh, it's, it's a meetup for people to gather together and share ideas and inspiration. Uh, I briefly talked about it, this earlier. So this is how a typical normal Friday Hacks session in the distant past where we could still gather in large groups would look like. Okay, so we sort of just book a room and we sort of like invite speakers. The speakers can be from uh, the industry. They can be students like yourself. They can be, um, students, yeah, they can be like, a, um, yeah, from academia as well. So we just invite the speakers, if they have anybody, if they have something cool to share that's related to hacking, they can, they will just uh, come and share at our sessions. And then uh, we, the people, we just, the attendees, we just sort of attend the session and listen to the speaker. And um, yeah, we just uh, hear them talk about their cool projects and we ask them questions. We just pass ideas around. And that's what we do at Friday Hex. And uh, just to show one of the very cool speakers that we had in the past, this was actually like uh, in 2018 when we invited the creator of VLC Media Player. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have sort of used this software before, this cone thingy that you know we see in computers these days that really can play any sort of media files. We invited the creator of VLC and he was uh, very nice. He was able to come down to uh, share about his project and talk about like the technical details about his project about why he did it and stuff. So uh, if you guys are interested, you can sort of just like look up the recording on YouTube and you can like, like and just and like look at it. So we do invite very cool speakers from time to time. In fact, our speakers are usually very cool. They share very cool projects all the time. Uh, and in fact, if you have a very cool project, you can just uh, write to us and we can see, we can schedule for you to have a slot to speak at Friday Hacks as well. And um, Usually in the second Friday Hex of the semester, which is next week. So this today is the first Friday Hex. First Friday Hex is Welcome Tea. The second Friday Hex is Project Intern. So this is a picture of Project Intern, where we essentially gather together to talk about internships. Because I'm sure as a student, 
you guys are all very concerned about who oh, should I be doing internships and how do I get at the internships and why should I get internships? And uh, so we, we'll sort of just uh, invite a lot of people who, um, who are very experienced with internships and who have a lot of stories to tell, okay? So just come and share about the internship experience and tell you why you should do it. So this is uh, week two of Friday Hacks. Happens one week from now on the 28th of August. Join us next week and you'll be able to hear about internships. And I added this, this uh, photo because usually for every single Friday Hacks session, we, we, we serve free pizza. So literally, if this session right now was hosted physically on campus, we would have pizza there for you guys, okay? And uh, really because we feel that uh, Friday Hacks is really a time for people to chill and talk about ideas. And um, when we do that, we, we like to do it over pizza. We like to ensure that our hackers are well fed, okay? But unfortunately, as uh, circumstances now are like that, we, don't, we can't really host physical events. But my promise to you is, uh, in the future, when this whole COVID nonsense is over, and when you guys come for Friday Hacks, we will ensure that you guys are well fed, you guys can enjoy great pizza with us. So that's my promise to you. So just to summarize, Friday Hacks is our weekly meetup. It happens every Friday. Um, for this semester, it will be every Friday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. And, and okay, not every Friday, you, you sort of just uh, check our Telegram channel and we'll sort of uh, tell you when it's happening and all. So yeah, uh, essentially like industry professionals, students, academics will come and give cool talks about their projects and stuff. And uh, we usually like to tell people, you know, come for the pizza and stay for the inspiration. But this semester we don't have the pizza. So I'll just tell you guys to come for the inspiration. Okay. Uh, next question about hacker tools. No, no, sorry, not question. Next part about hacker tools. So the next event that we usually we, we are gonna run this semester is a uh, hacker tools. And uh, hacker tools is really about mm, helping you to like uh, to teach you skills that are essential in computing but are not taught in schools. Okay, so the some of the skills that we teach are things like uh, installing Linux, uh, command line, and like data wrangling and like uh, LaTeX and stuff. So um, I would say these are tools and like these are skills that you know you usually your lecturers they won't teach you in class. They sort of just expect you to find out on its own, like. And uh, we sort of just want, want to like bridge that learning curve a bit that, and make the learning curve easier for you guys. And that's what we are trying to do here by like hosting these um, workshops so that we can teach you these skills. And uh, this, this workshop, uh, Hacker Tools, happens on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. And again, this semester it will be held on Zoom. So this is an example of uh, one of the Hacker Tools session we had. Uh, around two semesters ago, where one of our core team members, Hao Wei, uh, he was teaching uh, people about how to use SSH. So I'm sure if you guys are taking modules like, uh, I don't know, CS1010 or like CS2030, you guys will probably be facing problems with like SSH and stuff. And uh, we will have like instructors, very knowledgeable instructors like Hao Wei, who will be there to guide you along and tell you like what every step of the process does and basically make it easy for you guys. And uh, next up, we have hacker school. So essentially, we are trying to inculcate like a hacker culture in NUS, right? So for you guys to start hacking, we wanted to equip you guys with the skills so that you can start hacking. And that's what that's how hacker school comes into play. Okay. Essentially, hacker school aims to equip you with the knowledge, with the skills, so that you guys are able to just start on your own projects on your own. And um, what you see here is a picture where one of our core team members, Chai Tanya, Chai, Chai was actually like teaching this whole class that's quite few about how to make Telegram bots. And really like this whole workshop is really just about, you know, teaching you the skills on how to make your own Telegram bots. But um, about how, about the type of Telegram bots you want to make is up to you. It's about up to you to figure out the type of problems you want to solve and all. And that's really the whole essence of hacker school, okay? So to summarize, for Hacker School is our long running workshop series where you know, um, we teach skills like uh, how to use Python to do some like basic automation. We teach like HTML and CSS so that you know how to uh, make your own websites and all. And we teach how to use Git, teach things like how to make Telegram bots and a lot more things like machine learning, which we're gonna cover next semester and all. 
And um, yeah, if you guys are, want to learn about this type of skills, uh, I, I think you guys will be very excited for this. And uh, this uh, hacker school runs on Saturdays on 1 p.m. Uh, usually we take like uh, around two to three hours, but because uh, uh, this semester, um, all our workshops are going to be on Zoom and we know that on Zoom, people are probably going to be more like lethargic listening to calls over Zoom. So we're going to try out a different format on Zoom this semester and um, the workshops are going to be slightly shorter and uh, to, to ensure that you guys have a higher retention of the knowledge. And um, this is probably our flagship event and the event that is most popular, which is Hack and Roll. So Hack and Roll is essentially a hackathon that we host. And uh, the goal of it is really to just allow you to build whatever you want to, for you to hack and for you to have fun. And fun is really like the key word here. Really, you, you can build whatever you want. And in fact, we even have very cool prizes such as uh, most awesomely useless hack. To encourage you to build things that are really just for fun. You know, it's not like all the other very serious hackathons where they give you like uh, a, a question. They want you to save the world and like and stuff. We don't want you to like save the world. We want you to just build whatever you want just for fun. And that's what our hackathon is about. So if you can see over here how we run our hackathon is uh, usually every year we invite people to like the cinnamon tembusu dining hall. And um and as you can see, there's really a lot of people. It's really just a whole congregation of people, like-minded people like you and me. We just want to get together and work on something cool. And we just do it over a 24-hour hackathon. And it's a very like um, nice environment because we support you a lot with things like goodies. On the left, you see like all the participants coming to, to like uh, collect goodies and stuff. And on the right, you see um, there's like very nice food catered for everyone and people are just mingling around food and so and uh, yeah we really do take care of you guys and ensure that you guys have the best environment to create your best funnest hacks but i would say as of now the plans for hack and roll 2021 mm, is still we are still deciding on how we can run it um so we'll, we'll give you an update again uh, later in the semester because uh, as you can see, the whole event is really, it's a, it's a large group. Let's just say it's a large group. And uh, we are still deciding on what's the best way to run it while we still maintain the essence of the event, which is people have fun and people can do whatever they want. So yes, this is the largest student-run hackathon in Singapore. And there's really no set challenges on our topics at all. And we usually host it every January. And uh, last but not least, uh, I'm going to talk about Project Intern. So Project Intern is sort of this series of events that we uh, sort of run on the site. And uh, we also run it with Friday Hacks. So uh, earlier I told you that uh, next week is Project Intern Friday Hacks. But uh, on top of that, we also run this other series of uh, events where we, it's not, okay, not really events. We sort of just, uh, it's a program where we uh, invite a lot of very knowledgeable mentors and like, um, very knowledgeable people from the industry where they have a lot of uh, industry knowledge and they know a lot about um, a lot of working knowledge about how, how to like uh, find internships and why you should find internships and what um, employers are looking out for. They are very me uh, knowledgeable mentors in those fields and we sort of uh, ask them to see if they can conduct mock interviews with students like us. Okay, Students like us that are really very lost about how to go about our career how to think about internships, how to think about jobs. We are like lost, right? So they will be there. We sort of match them with you and they sort of just guide you on like how you can better uh, maneuver around your career and stuff. And uh, yeah, so they help you to do things like career advisory and like mock interviews. Uh, essentially, they uh, prepare you so that, you know, when you eventually go to apply for an internship, you, are, you feel more prepared. You're able to answer the questions posed by the interviewers. And they also share like experiences, uh, like how the, their experiences working at certain places and like the tips that you can have to like uh, secure an internship and all. So um, again, next week, if you come back for Friday Hacks, you'll be able to hear about how it's like to intern in companies like uh, Facebook, Google, and Stripe. Yep. Okay. So um, we are actually nearing the end of the welcome tea actually. So, um, so just to tell you guys more about the upcoming events that we have, 
Um, Friday, so the next Friday hacks that we have is uh, it's actually a project intern, like I, I mentioned, next week, 7 p.m. And uh, actually tomorrow, we do have a hacker school session that's uh, about introduction to Python. So uh, if you guys would like to join in the session, you, uh, later on when you, you see the Telegram chat link, you can actually just uh, 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 enter the Telegram chat and uh, just fill up the form to join up the hacker school session tomorrow. And um, uh, the first session of Hacker Tools this semester is uh, two weeks later on 1st September, where we'll be going through about what is what are virtual machines and uh, how you can install Ubuntu. Okay, so Ubuntu is like this uh, Linux operating system that is easier for, for beginners to use. And uh, so we, we are thinking that by teaching you guys how to install Ubuntu and how to use uh, virtual machines, it's uh, easier for you guys to maneuver around the Linux world and the Linux command line and such. So, of course, your next question will be how can we find more details about uh, when our events are and how we can go about joining them. So, yep, scan these two QR codes. You can join our Telegram channel and join our Telegram group. So, essentially, the, the messages that we see on the Telegram channel, they are going to be cross-posted on the Telegram group. But if you join the Telegram group, um, you, you can sort of join our community where we can discuss about things that uh, Suppose we need certain help with getting started on our, our own hacks. We need certain directions on how to get started with this project we're working on. We can just ask questions in the Telegram group. It's a very friendly group. We won't bite. And uh, we sort of just uh, ensure that the chat is a conducive place for hackers to talk about what we want to do and conducive place to talk about our hacks. So join us in the Telegram group. Join us in the Telegram channel and you'll be able to hear more about our events. And you'll be able to just um, be subscribed in a sense. Okay, whenever we have a new event that's coming out soon, you will just receive a message. So moving on, I'm gonna ask about. Uh, no, I'm gonna talk about uh, frequently asked questions. So these are questions that people, you guys, will probably have right now, and uh, I'm gonna clear them up a bit. So people always ask us like, uh, how do you become a member of NUS Hackers? So the answer to that is that uh, we don't actually have a concept of membership. So essentially, we uh, how how it works is that. We, how we are structured is that we have a core team and the core team sort of just uh, goes around doing all the hard work for you. We are the ones that go, goes around thinking about what workshop to run and we go around finding speakers for like Friday hacks. We go around booking rooms and uh, setting up the Zoom, Zoom course and such. We are the ones that do all the hard work, all the setting up the logistics and stuff and you guys just decide whether you want to come for it or not. And if you, if you guys are in, interested in like the session for that week, just RSVP and you guys can join the activity. So in that sense, there's no concept of membership. There are really no obligations. You just come for whatever interests you. Okay. Um, yeah. But again, like I said, we have a core team that sort of uh, runs the whole events behind the scene. So if you are passionate about our mission and you want to help spread hacker culture, uh, we just want to let you guys know that we are recruiting at the moment. And uh, if you are interested to join core team, uh, do visit the link below, uh, nushackers.org slash join hyphen core team, and, you, and you'll be able to like just fill up a form and we will contact you about how we can go around uh, the whole joining core team process. But let me warn you that, uh, like I said, core team does all the hard work. And if you're really here for the fun stuff, it's really okay to just be a member. And in fact, it's more, a lot more fun to do so. So if you are really keen on our mission, and you want to help us to spread hacker culture, we want you, you can join us. So uh, the next question people will ask is, uh, I'm not a computing student, can I attend your events? And the answer is, of course you can. And in fact, we love it if you attend our events. Because like I said, a lot of our events is really about uh, sharing perspectives, sharing like opinions and sharing ideas. And we, we will really love it if you know, we can have like greater diversity and alternate perspectives and, and such. And um, we sort of ties in with the next question. Like, uh, uh, I don't know, actually earlier, I think uh, somebody asked in the Q&A about uh, if you have no programming knowledge or if you, are very, if you know very basic programming knowledge, can you join our events? And the answer is uh, definitely yes, because uh, I would say our events are catered to different level of like, technicality. Some of our, our events are actually like very beginner friendly. And uh, if you come for those, you will still be able to just mingle around and uh, get some good ideas. Um, yeah, so 
if you are like not a computing student, feel free to join us. And uh, we always welcome you. And if you don't know any programming or like don't know anything about hacking, why not just join us and absorb some ideas and even get started on it with us. So suppose like you don't know like how to program and stuff, you know, you can always join hacker school and we will be able to sort of like teach you how to hack. So why not just get started with us? And then the next question is, uh, I'm not an NUS student. Can I attend your events? And like I covered earlier, of course you can because our events are really just open to the public. And again, we love greater diversity in our audience and we love like alternate perspectives. So if you are not an NUS student, just feel free to come and join us as well. All our events, even like our hackathons and all, they are open to the public. Yeah, so I'm actually like nearing the last time of the presentation. And uh, if you guys didn't really catch what I've been saying for the last uh, 30 minutes, uh, this whole last slide sort of summarizes it. The key gist is all our events, we design it thinking about how we can benefit you. So, and, it, and we design it about how we can have fun together. So if you, you guys would like to come and join us in some events where we can have fun and hack together, join our events and we'll have a lot of fun hacking together this academic year. And thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to just uh, ask in the Q&A, ask in the chat and, uh, and join us in our Telegram channel and on Telegram group. Um, if not, um, like I said, if you have any other like collaborations or any questions, you can also feel free to email us. For example, if you have a very cool project you'd like to talk about at Friday Hacks, or you are very interested in teaching certain topics at Hacker School, you can also just drop us an email and we can uh, uh, discuss about how we can like um, use this platform to help you guys grow the hacker community with us together. And yep. If you guys have any questions, feel free to just uh, ask, uh, ask them in the Q&A right now. If not, that's the end of my sharing. Thanks again for coming on a Friday night. Like, uh, you know, Friday night is the time that, you know, people are supposed to go out and have fun and meet friends. But I'm really so glad that all of you guys, all 105 of you at the moment, actually like put some time to come here and join me together where we talk about NUS hackers and what we do. And in fact, that's the whole definite, that's the whole, just to share some trivia, that's how like Friday Hacks came about. Uh, Friday Hacks, the, the first few core team members decided to just run it on a Friday because they wanted to, uh, to, to sort of just uh, attract people who care enough about, about sharing about hacks that they are willing to forego their Friday nights to, to come for like this sharing session. So yeah, really appreciate your presence here. Feel free to ask any questions. Okay, so I, I'm, I can take Daniel questions. Daniel, Daniel is asking like, can we take a lot and learn like lessons, knowledge, skills, and et cetera, if you join such a CCA? I would say your knowledge may vary because uh, uh, like I said, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the events that we run, some of them are very beginner friendly, which you tend to benefit a lot. Um, but then I would say, the hacker route sort of depends on like consistent practice and all uh, where you sort of need to be like trying to work on cool stuff or like from here, here and there, like um, do it consistently. So if you come to our events consistently, you probably have a lot to gain. And um, yeah, you'll probably be able to learn quite a lot um, because a lot of the speakers we invite, such as for Friday Hacks, they are actually like very seasoned industry professionals who have a lot to share. They, they will share about things like, oh, how would we design certain systems such that they are more fault tolerant or like design certain systems such that they are more efficient and certain hacks they do to get around things. And uh, these are like certain experiences that we would never have no like experience otherwise. So really listening to like people who are more experienced than us, it sort of helps us to grow our knowledge by a lot. Yeah. And then uh, Siva asks, can you join core team as a noob? So the first thing is, okay, um, here at core team uh, and our attitude towards hackers is that we don't really differentiate people as a noob or a non-noob. In fact, if we welcome noobs as well, if you really want to use that term noob. So um, I would say it's really about understanding our mission and like being aligned with our mission. 
that's like probably our main criteria for core team applicants. We are really looking out for people who are passionate about spreading hacker culture. And uh, yeah, so if you fulfill that criteria, I would say you could try applying to core team. Yeah. And don't call yourself a noob. We were all noobs once. We get better from time to time and eventually become our noob. We all start somewhere. So if you feel like you're a noob, which I don't think you are, you can start become start unnoobing yourself with us by joining our events. Yep. Uh, feel free to ask more questions. Okay, if not, yeah, we don't really have, have any questions remaining. Um, yep. So if you guys have any other questions, feel free to drop us drop us an email, call team at aashackers.org. If not, see you next week and see maybe see you tomorrow if you guys are coming for the Python workshop. And have a great weekend. Uh, it's a, a most dinner time. You guys should go and like, you know, eat dinner and you know, catch up on sleep after like a rough week of your school. Yep. If not, I'm, I think I'm going to close this webinar.